So hello everyone, I'm Shanna, I'm a Canadian medical student and on this channel we are making different videos to share pre-med advice, showcase different medical journeys, and hopefully give some inspiration and encouragement and positivity. And today we have Wendy. I am so thankful for her to take the time out to chat with us and share her journey. She first did uh, pharmacy school and now she got accepted to medical school. So congrats to Wendy. I guess just my lowest point in the uh, process of getting into medicine is uh, when I applied the first time and I got rejected. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was actually really tough I didn't think that I would be so sad over something but I was very sad like um the first time I applied I didn't even get an interview so I just felt it was almost like heartbreaking and soul crushing because you basically spill out your life onto that application and for people who have never applied before it's a very strict application in that they list out like specific categories you can categorize all your experiences into and then you have to describe them in a very limited amount of words and so like when you are being so like honest and you try to say everything that you want to do is very difficult and when you pour out your life you get rejected your life like is reduced to a number and that number is not good enough like to me i thought that was like a huge damage like a, yeah like to my um like self morale i guess and took it was like it was deep funk for me i would say i was in a very sad state for a while but i think like like how i got out of it was like i just told myself that you know like I, I'm in a fortunate position that I could continuously reapply until I got in. And I don't think that, you know, like I would be too devastated to, I don't, not, not devastated. I don't think I would be sad at all if I just continued to do work as a pharmacist after graduation. The only reason I think why I continued to apply for medicine was just because it was just a dream that I always had, but there re really reached a point where I wouldn't have found a difference working as a pharmacist or a doctor. Like, that was how I told myself. And I was very lucky in that I have a very supportive family and a group of friends that um, believed in me much more than I believed in myself. And I think that did um, give me a lot more confidence to reapply the second time, you know, like obviously having some more new experiences, rewarding everything. I think that does make a big difference. And yeah, but I did say that I, would, I do think that was perhaps my lowest point, just having to deal with failure like that. No, thank you so much for sharing that one. That one's like a hard one here. So I appreciate it. I think it will be helpful because I think as we know, the average applicant applies three times. Mm -hmm. so there are people that applied even more. Um, so I definitely think like the takeaway from, you know, Wendy's story is that like, you know, even people that like, you know, like you probably some someone watching might be like, oh, you know, like, you know, before this point of story, they're like, Wendy had it all together. Obviously she was surefire to get in and um, and then, you know, they feel bad about themselves, which I can imagine, you know, myself doing that or something, um, is just then, um, but realizing that, like, it's kind of a numbers game, and it kind of sucks, and it's, I think, one of our admissions committee or something, they always talk about how, or maybe with some other place, anyways, they talk about how, like, it's, they only have this number of seats, and they have, basically, of all the applicants that they took, if they took, like, double the number, every single, like, person, mostly, like, like, so many people that apply, are like gonna be would have been amazing to take but mm -hmm. they just literally have a limitation of how big the class can be and uh, but i definitely i think i think i like i think that totally makes sense because it, it feels a bit personal you know it's like one thing to be you know rejected for, from something because of i don't know like something more like impersonal like grades or something yeah, right like, like, it was peer grades or something right yeah and you're like but I think because you're like, I'm trying to showcase myself, it feels a little bit more of a personal attack. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe someone else can relate to your words and feel comforted by them. But um, yeah. if I you would say, yeah, I would say like for those who didn't get in, like don't even, don't even worry about it. Cause most of the time it's not you. <laughs> most of the time it's just the people that read your application. It's all very random, right? Like, People who read your application might not relate to you as someone else who read your application might have. And so if you apply in a different year, you know, the, like if you kept the application the same, there's no reason why like you won't have an, like a different mm -hmm. chance. And I think like sometimes it's just about rewarding things, honestly. Like mm -hmm. it don't take it personally at all. Don't, don't be like me. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I think that's totally fair. So like, I think like both be positive, like, you know, mm-hmm. get yourself up. But I also think you have permission to wallow if you like, because, yeah. you know, I think sometimes that's needed. You change, you mentioned like maybe you reworded stuff. Like what did you kind of revamp from second time to now successfully getting in? Um, I don't remember what exactly I revamped. I revamped my whole application, like not the, not, not, not the things like in it. I think I kept most of the things that was in my first application the same. I only changed the wording and I added new things. Um, like for example, the wording, instead of being a general description of what I did, um, a point that I got from my friend was try to make it quantifiable like I tried to add a lot more numbers or try to like tell about the effect that I made instead of exactly what I did Mm -hmm. um like for example I would say I led a team of however many execs that created an event for however many attendees and it was very successful because of whatever measure Mm -hmm. so like it was kind of something like that instead of just saying I led this and this is what happened. Like, they don't want a description of whatever you did. They want to know why that was important. Um, the new things, I would just say, like, I tried to add, like, oh, well, yeah, I, I put in my new research things. I put in a little bit more of my leadership things that I did in uh, my second to third year. So, yeah, I think, I think that, was, that was basically it. Um, Practicums help a lot, actually, because in you can put down your practicums as uh, like patient interaction opportunities as well. So in pharmacy, like that's a given, right? That's a benefit you have. Use it. So yeah, mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a nice hack. Um, yeah, I feel like definitely writing writing the application is an art. Maybe yes. it's be that way, but uh, <laughs> but I guess it, it is what it is. Um, and it's kind of a weird way of writing. It's kind of like you know most of us don't like sit around and like brag about our accomplishments yeah numbers so it it feels weird to write about ourselves like that way um it's probably just like as many people like if you know you haven't gotten to the stage of writing medical school application writing your resume is always a very weird experience or ever letter when you're like i'm amazing because i did this this and this and you're like but (laughs) it's um it's a kind of like a learning experience like how to write an application for sure um and i think maybe like i guess I guess I'm trying to straddle this takeaway is like both you managed to like get new things that improved your application. And I'm sure those like sounded really cool because now you have helped get more healthcare experience. And then you also gain public, uh, the presentations and stuff, which are really impressive. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the also thing was just like, you know, between the first application, second application, it's not like Wendy suddenly won like an Olympic. No. Right. So like, I think that's like maybe the key takeaway again, going back to our point about like that first time, like it, it wasn't that, you were weak in the first moment it was just like really maybe if you had applied with the same application it might have you know with the with the reworded stuff it maybe would have been the same so yeah. it's, nobody knows I don't know I don't know what goes behind those like yeah. doors and stuff but um, just think like you know if you reapply next year you have an entire year's worth to improve yourself and show them that you are an improved person so I I never think that you know like failure is yeah, well, yeah, it hurts at the time. It does hurt a lot. <laughs> but afterwards, I think I, I was a better applicant definitely the second time. It's, it's weird because when you look back at yourself, you're like, I think I was the same person. I think I would have made the same decisions again. But now, like, there, there's, there's a lot of things that change that you, you, you don't realize, I guess. Like, um, as I mentioned before, my third year pharmacy, I really saw no difference between working as a pharmacist and a doctor. And when I applied, that was in second year summer, right? So you find out like basically a year later what the decision is. Um, I was still leaning more towards med. But in third year really changed. So I guess like the advice that I would give back to my second year self when I reapplied was maybe you don't have to rush things. I wouldn't have minded getting my pharmacy degree before going into medicine. I think there's a lot of things I would have learned in my fourth year practicum that would have helped me in my future medicine career. Like for example, like I already actually knew my placements for fourth year practicum. They were at VGH, St. Paul's renal unit and um, uh, my community was gonna be in Campbell River. And I never, like, first of all, 
I've always wanted to go and work at VGH or St. Paul's. I've always wanted to go and like try what it's like in more of a rural area like Campbell River and community. Mm -hmm. It was like my ideal practicum schedule too. So I think like, and and now I don't have the opportunity to do it anymore because I chose med. So I think like, if anything, I would just go back and tell myself, you know, don't beat yourself up by failing the first time. Doesn't mean that you're not good enough. You can become better by just waiting a little bit more, but you know, it is what it is now. And I don't, I don't think I'll regret it. So. And I think like, that's probably like, I totally relate so much to the stuff you said. Um, But I think it, it comes from this thing that when we're type A and we have high expectations um, for ourselves, and we also put in all that effort. It is really easy because it felt like everything you did was your effort. Yes. Um, that you can easily feel disappointed because it feels like, you know, you pride yourself on effort. You're like, did I not put enough yeah. effort? Despite the fact you know you put in a lot of effort. Um, I think it's kind of, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I like that you put the positive spin that like you would have gained an experience. So like, I think that's, that's really hard. And I think like, as much as I want to say this also to myself, that was, you know, in a similar shoes as you when I was in, you know, that, that I think that year, those years that we go through an application cycle is always a very anxiety provoking year. I, I know some people yeah. managed to get through a very chill props to them. I wasn't one of them, but um, you know, like that feeling that you wonder, like you really, you really, really hope you get in, but you also keep telling yourself like, it's fine. It's fine if it doesn't work out. It's fine if it doesn't work. I think obviously, obviously everyone who applies is very hopeful that it will be this, it will be this year. Um, so it's like that, it's like kind of a balance. And I, I definitely, you know, I think it's someone watching this is going to be like, yeah, easy for you guys to say, you got to accept it. <laughs> right. But like, I think it's when I was, you know, before I got in, people before me were telling me the same thing, like, don't rush, don't rush. And I understand that now I'm repeating the same words. It's yeah. hard to grasp in the moment because I think you always feel uneasy until you get there. Mm-hmm. But I, I understand as from your story and, um, you know, everyone else's is just like that whole, like, that, like, rush thing that, like, you know, you, you know, like, what was, the, what was, like, the big, you know, like, you're still like, super young and have tons and tons of time to, you know, be a surgeon, be a physician, be, you know, anything and, you know, crush these last, like, you know, this entire career ahead um, and have so much to gain and stuff and so much to learn and explore. But um, I think it's, it's easy to feel like, I always feel like um, it's easy to feel that feeling of always constantly feeling behind. Yeah. I don't feel that. Um, it's funny because, you know, we're quite on track. If, and I don't remember this. I have to have my friends. As I had same as you. I think the most thing I'm most grateful for, and I think anyone can be most grateful is for for is people that believe in you more than you believe yourself. Yes. Oh my gosh. They're the sweet. They're the reason why you continue to be the way that you are. Yeah. I think it really is helpful, especially people that are hard on themselves. But I think sometimes even if you're not someone who's naturally hard on yourselves, maybe like Wendy and I, um, I think when you go through a trying time, not, you know, I wouldn't say this is like a tragedy, but I think that a little bit where you are putting a lot of heart and soul and you mm-hmm. can get quite crushed. I think having people by your side is like that, like really big thing that makes all that difference um, that remind you that like, there's like more life. And I think I have a friend that constantly reminds me that like, I, I constantly complain about being behind in life mm-hmm. compared to peers. I get you. <laughs> I get you. And which is, um, <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> I don't, okay, maybe, I don't know, this isn't off the mic chat, but like if I compare myself to my friends who are going to be graduating next year from pharmacy, like it's, they're like, by the time that I graduate, which is in four years or so, and I finish residency, depending on what residency I do, Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be another two to five years. By the time that I get out, I can actually practice as a standing doctor. They're going to have like almost 10 years of experience over me. Like clinical yeah. experience yeah. over me. Isn't that so <laughs> crazy? That's, that's literally, yes. That's, that's, yes, exactly. That's what I mean by feeling behind, which sounds yeah. weird, uh, maybe. Um, it's funny because, again, I need someone who's not in this game to remind me that. But mm-hmm. my friend, like, you know, you're, you're technically, you know, I don't feel like a real doctor. I don't think I will until I'm done medical school residency and then been out in practice for a few yeah. years. Um, but my friend was like, technically, you're kind of a baby doctor mm-hmm. to have someone that with that distance remind mm-hmm. you that you're kind of on track even yeah. though yeah I feel that like the people that are and or some I don't know if you had some friends that are like maybe already engineers computer scientists and they're like literally already drawing in like an adult 
Yeah. You know, adult salary and probably on track if they save enough years to own their own home. Yeah, like I have friends that have already bought their own apartments that are already going to get their, like they got their own mortgages and everything. I want to say it's probably more common than a lot of people that are feeling like behind on, I think the adultingness. I think that probably applies. I think if you want to do a PhD or something, it's just anytime you're in like school for a protracted period, um, you will have to be a sacrifice. So yeah it's a little bit, yeah, it's, I don't know, I wouldn't say, I don't think it's a bad cost, because in the end, like, if, you know, this is what I love, then I'm, you know, I, I'm happy to pay it, and it's fine, and I'm excited, I think the time that we're in training is fun, mm-hmm. learning, it's not like, you know, it's not a bad, it's kind of, it's a busy time, it's a rough time, but it's not a bad time, I think that's the thing, and I think, like, falling, yeah, just that whole falling behind, and, um, like, financially, I think that's usually not the most biggest priority, I think it's just the feeling of being an adult, and being, um, like dependent on people and and things and yeah, because it's not a great feeling yeah I I think like there is like that financial dependence a little bit I'm you know happy to have my parents and stuff but I think like there's a difference between um when you're a student you're always like looking up to um you're you're gonna have a resident you're gonna have an attending you'll always be like the bottom of the total which is fine but you know by the time you like like you said like in 10 years time are friends or people our friends that are in pharmacy school or whatever they'll already be managers maybe by the time exactly. they're just like coming out or still in training yeah it's a little bit of a weird thing you have to be like I don't think it's a bad thing yeah. it's just like something that I just have to swallow some um self-comparison I think people should leave questions for Wendy below I hope what I talked about today is relatable to some people can help some people and yeah thank you for having me here and to give me the opportunity to talk about it.